What's up guys? So now that winter is clearly here in, in Colorado, today I'm going to talk about four tips that'll help make your winter hiking experience much more safe, easier, and of course more fun. To read a blog and more information about this video, as always check the link in the description below. So number one tip, and I would say this is the most important and probably almost a four part tip, but it's research. So with research, you're going to want to research a number of different things and I'll list them here. Number one, weather. That's super important in the summer, fall, spring, always important too, but in the winter, weather could literally kill you if a storm front rolls in and you're not prepared for it. So I use different resources, opensummitweather.gov, mountain forecast. You can check out everything I'm using in the links below, but that's really important. The things that I look for, obviously snow, precipitation in general, but winds and temperatures as well. A 30 mile per hour wind when it's 30 degrees out can make a horrible, horrible day, especially if you're not prepared. The second part of research would be trail conditions. So knowing what to expect in terms of snow, ice, has anyone been on the trail? Is there a boot pack? Is there, do you need snowshoes? Things like that are really helpful. Sometimes you can't find that information, but you can use a variety of different resources, including my website to figure out what's going on in terms of conditions. So that's really important during the winter. The next part would be trailhead access. Similar to conditions, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can get to the trailhead. A hike that might be four miles in the summer could easily be eight, nine, 10, 11, or completely inaccessible in the winter. So make sure you do that research too. That's gonna to be a huge deal breaker for some of you uh, wanting to do the higher elevation stuff in general and some of the more remote stuff uh, when you're on a county road, those typically have seasonal closures. If you want to research where to find that information, you can look through the different county websites, the different wilderness websites, the Forest Service, or of course my site and some others on the web on the internet that'll give you that kind of information on seasonal closures. Finally, and I'll talk more about this in a bit, but researching if your hike goes through avalanche terrain, and part two with that would be if that what the avalanche conditions look like in that area. So avalanche train and what avalanches are, that's a whole nother video. But in general, I use CalTOPO to see what the slope angle is. And then I also use Colorado Avalanche Information Center to check out the latest forecast, observations, things like that. You have to remember, just because you're not skiing or snowboarding or snowmobiling, as a hiker, you can still trigger and get caught in avalanches. You wanna be super aware of that when you're picking your hike and doing your research beforehand. So I know that was a lot of tips for part one, but research is without a doubt the most crucial tip that I have for you to make your trip safe and fun. All right, my second tip for winter hiking here in Colorado would be managing your time and time expectations. So in the summer or in dry conditions, you pretty much know how fast you move you know, with elevation. If you don't, maybe that's something to pay attention to because it'll be helpful when you start getting into winter hikes. In the winter, you're gonna have two factors with time. Number one, the conditions are just gonna make you move much, much slower. Snow, ice, more technical terrain, things like that are really gonna slow you down. And the other thing you have to worry about and be prepared for would be less sunlight. In the winter, you're gonna have shorter days, which means be prepared for, you know, some nighttime conditions. That might mean having a headlamp, that might mean, you know, having some warmer layers, things like that. So speaking of gear, that's going to bring us to the third tip for winter hiking that I have for you. Third of four tips of Colorado winter hiking here, and that's going to be extra gear. Now, extra gear, again, has multiple parts to it. You're going to start off with layers having extra layers in your bag, jackets, gloves, hats, even socks sometimes, depending on how your body runs. I know mine pretty well, and so I've honed in what I'm gonna pack. If you're new to it, overpack, because you can always put on layers that you have, but if you run out, you're just kind of screwed, and frostbite is a real thing that can really act quickly and make you lose limbs and toes and all that not fun stuff. The second part of gear would be additional hard goods. So that's things like snowshoes, micro spikes, crampons, mountain axe. You have to know your terrain and the hike you're going to get into. But in general, I like to bring kind of everything I might need. And again, if you don't need it, you're just carrying extra weight there, not the end of the world. The one thing I always laugh about is snowshoes for me. I always bring them and then I don't use them or don't need to use them. And then I'm like, oh, you know, on the next trip, I won't need snowshoes. And then I'm post holing up to my waist and it sucks and I wish I had them. Speaking of gear, extra things that you might even never use, 
but are good to have when it's windy. Things like goggles. You know, if it's a really windy, snowy day, the wind will just eat through everything you have and having something like goggles where you never think you actually need it. And then you are like, wow, what a bonus thing. Uh, but gear can also just break down to having extra emergency gear, things like that. So just think about your packing list, your 14er list, if you have one or your regular packing list and make sure you add to it based on the conditions or uh, temperature for that day. Speaking of gear too, all of that extra gear is great, especially the hard good stuff. But if you don't know how to properly use it, it's really a waste to have on your bag. So whether it be a crampons, mountain axe, or even snowshoes, make sure you know how to use all that extra gear you might have and need. My fourth and final tip for winter hiking here in Colorado would be to have a GPS, a map, some kind of way to find your route. Because in the winter here, obviously we get snow and obviously the trail is going to be buried. And so there's a lot of times where you might get lucky. Someone's hiked it either a week ago, a month ago, whatever, and you can follow the trail pretty clearly. But there's also different routes in winter, depending on, you know, if you're on a high mountain, for example, there's sometimes winter routes that are more direct, less avalanche prone, things like that. And you need to be able to, uh, navigate and find the trail. There's been so many times where I'm on a trail and I get lost and, he, and I'm following somebody else's footsteps sometimes even, uh, and having that GPS or route to follow is just so clutch. For all of my hikes on my website and channel here, you can check the website, the virtualsherpa.com, and I have my GPX file that you can download to your phone, your smart device, your GPS, things like that, and you can follow my tracks. Um, if you can't find something on my site, that's the, generally what I look for is someone else's GPX or you can create your, your own on Caltopo and uh, that's a great way to do that as well. Uh, but in general, you want to have a GPS because there's going to be a lot less people on this trail usually in the winter and so you want to be able to rescue yourself and get back to where you started from and so that's really key. So yes, does winter hiking mean that it's going to be a lot more difficult usually than the summer? Sure, but the positives are you get to see cool spots like this, frozen waterfalls, way less crowds, and ultimately, I think it's worth it. So that's gonna wrap up my video of my four tips on winter hiking here in Colorado. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If I miss something that helps you hike here in the winter, feel free to drop that in the comments below as well. Hiking in the winter has its pros and cons, uh, but certainly there are some cool spots you can get to in the winter and see things in the winter that you can't see in the summer. If you're new to my channel, I do virtual trail guides, hiking tips, things of that nature here in Colorado and much, much more outside of that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe and then bell button. It really helps with viewership and uh, make sure you don't miss any of my future content. I really appreciate your support and views today. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we'll see you here on the next adventure.